Hi everyone, so today I'll be talking about probably the most important basic skill you need to learn for organic chemistry, which is nomenclature. And I'll first be going over the IUPAC rules on how to name organic structures. The very first thing you need to do is to count the longest carbon chain. So, and then you give the suffix for each of like the corresponding number. So for one is meth and then, you know, so on. And then for IB, I think you only need to know up to six carbons, which is hex. Um, it is important to note that the chain is for every carbon to carbon bond. So sometimes the IB would draw the structure in the way to indicate its geometrical shape. So this is still a four carbon chain. It's not just two. The next thing you need to do is to identify the highest priority functional group as this is kind of what determines the main parent name of the organic molecule. And you also have to learn the corresponding suffix for each functional group. The one we're all familiar is um, alkanes, alkenes, and alkynes, and of course, alcohols and I'll go over the other suffix for the other functional groups we'll need to know. Um, the, it's kind of something more you have to learn on what group is of a higher priority but because this is up to the IUPAC but one way to know is the more oxidized the group the more the higher the priority it is. So for example alkynes has the highest higher priority over alkanes and alkenes as it has less hydrogens. So oxidation is defined as gain of electrons, loss of hydrogens, and loss of electrons. The next thing you need to know, the next thing you need to do is number the functional group and the substituents, which is the other groups that are on the chain that's not the highest priority. But it's the most important thing you need to do is to give the highest priority group the lowest number on the chain. Okay, I'll go over some examples because this is something you need to practice and practice to get this drilled into your head. Okay, so these might be a bit challenging, but I'll walk you guys through it afterwards. So please pause and just give your best attempt at it. I guess a little tip I'll have like for the condensed version is try to draw it out and uncondense it so you have a better idea of what the structure looks like and then I think you'll be able to recognize the group more easily. So yeah, good luck. Okay, so the first step is to number the carbon chains. So we know what primary suffix to give to these. It has to be the longest carbon chain. So it's a but a probe and the pent. First step. Second step is to identify the highest priority group. Here it'll be the alkene. Here's the, the hydroxyl group. And here I'll explain later, but there's just the alkene um, structure over there. So with this, you have to make sure that the highest priority group is given the lowest number possible. For example, this alkene was not numbered at three, it's at the second. So we have to note that down in the name, the two in. It's important to note down what number carbon it is attached to if there's other positions it could be at. For example, it could be here, here, or here. So be two in, and if you learn isomerism already, you would know this is E, be two in, but I'll go over that another day isomerism. Here we have a hydroxyl group as the highest priority group, but it's also important to note that it is also a saturated, saturated organic molecule as all of the carbons are attached to four other um, atoms. So you have to note that down in, as a propan, which kind of links back to alkanes. So it's a propan, and is that the second carbon? Propan 2 all because it's an alcohol with a hydroxyl group. 
So what we have here is a pentane because also there is no indication of a double or triple bond. It would look like this on a skeletal structure if it's triple, like this if it's double. So what we have on the little branches off here is not a uh, highest priority group, but it's also known as a uh, substituent, which we also need to put in the name. So here the substituent looks like this, just to make it clear. It's like in the R is the pentane. Since we have two of these, it will be a 2,4-dimethylpentane. Okay. Another important thing to note with naming substituents, ensure um, substituents are in alphabetical order when we name it. Okay, next I'll go over the fun different functional groups, what they look like and what their suffix are like. Okay, so here are more functional groups in addition to alcohols, which we touched upon earlier, alkanes, alkenes, and alkynes. Um, honestly, for these functional groups, it's just practice, 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 and learning how to recognize these groups and finding your own ways to remember them. And yeah, like for example, this might not help anyone, but for esters, I kind of just think that Esther really likes an oxygen sandwich with extra oxygens, because I think of this as an oxygen sandwich, and there's an extra oxygen. So yeah, practice, and I'll give three more practice questions involving some of these functional groups to help you learn how to name them. And whatever I wrote here in blue is their suffix. Also a little bit on ring structures, um, you just have to add a cyclo in front of it, and the way you name it is exactly the same as in a chain structures. Okay, so the first one, I guess you can immediately see that there's a double um, bonded oxygen at the end. So you can immediately identify that it is an aldehyde. So if you apply the rules as we have before, number... Um, along this chain. So we have a probe. There's no double bond, so it's a propan. And it's a aldehyde, so propanol. And then we also have a methyl group over there, being sneaky. So it's a 2-methyl propanol. Okay, next one. If you drew out the structures here, you would realize that this oxygen would actually have to be um, double bonded to the carbon over here. So then the carbon would have four um, bonds around it. So this, or you can just say that there are two oxygens. So you can identify that it is an ester. So esters, you kind of um, name it weirdly, you kind of have to look at it in two parts. So name like this part and this part. First part of the ester is always um, an alkyl group. So it will be a methyl, a methyl. And second bit, we kind of look on that. So we have two carbons. So it's pro, uh, not pro. Is eight methyl methanoate. So yeah, with esters, just break it into two kind of sections. So you know, this is an ethyl, and then this has two um carbons, so it's an ethane. But you have to add the O8 in the end to mention the two oxygens we have over there. Okay, and for this one, you can see we have both a halogen and a double bond. So we have a halo alkene. Um, 
you number this, just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Actually, no, no, no. Yeah. So we have a hat. Oops. Hat. And then we have dotted in at the end. So we have a double bond. Oh. We also have to say where the double bond is. Hept 2 in. We're not going to make it hept 6 in. And we have a 1 chloro. 2 in. 3. So we have to also mention the chloro and the methyl groups. Since chloro starts with a C, we have to mention it first. So be 1 chloro. And then we have a different color. Um, one chloro, four six dimethyl. Because we have to give um, they have two in the smallest number, so that means the methyl group has a slightly larger number, but it's okay. So yeah, that one was a bit more challenging, but I hope you guys go out and find other um, nomenclature questions and keep practicing.